Tapau. Welcome everyone on National Indigenous Peoples Day. It's my honor to be here representing Spirited Children's Society, a nonprofit organization in collaboration with the city and New Westminster. Now, it's a very special day for me and I hope to share it with you. Now, I'm going to talk about some indigenous content and this is the good part. After that, we are going to do a craft. Now, I'm hoping that your teachers have went ahead and uh, uh, per, uh, picked up these uh, packages for us. And we are going to walk through this together. It will be a, a beautiful journey. Now, our craft for today is going to be an indigenous medicine pouch or medicine bag. Now, it's very important to understand what you are making so that it's not just a craft, but there's a little bit of meaning and a little bit of purpose behind it. Now, as you could see, I decided to dress in a indigenous regalia today. Actually, I like to dress like this almost every day. I'm wearing orange to remember the 215 plus children that have passed on and were discovered. Hopefully that's something we could talk about in a good open way and have an open discussion. And as you can see, I have some uh, um, Canadian indigenous uh, clothing. And on it, you'll actually see that I actually have my own medicine bag. Now, a medicine bag is very special. A lot of people like to add different things. And we're going to go through a few things that are actually added into a medicine pouch. Some people like to add medicines, traditional medicines. It could be as simple as red willow bark, which is great to clear the mind and focus yourself. Maybe it's something to keep you your healthy and strong, like bitter root, or maybe something that's going to help you dream better, like mugwort. This is for great, great dreams, to see yourself focus and look forward to the possibilities of a better day. And I know you out there at times are probably thinking, that's what I need. Now, of course, we even have this one, diamond willow fungus. And if you tuned in on our family day, you'll notice that I actually did a story about this. This is one of my most favorite medicines, and I actually have it in here, one, one of the special medicines. Hopefully, I'll be able to share more stories about this wonderful medicine. There are so many beautiful medicines, right? And as you can see, this beautiful box that was gifted to us from our executive director, Ruth Weller. But of course, it's hard to put this in your pocket. So this is where this beautiful bag comes in. Now, the nice thing I love about this beautiful bag is you'll meet some people that like to keep secret what they put in here because it could be something very special. And these are the people that we honor and respect so they can keep what they have in here as a very personal, personal thing. So some people don't like to share what they have in here. And then other people will, may have a story that they put in here. And I'm going to share a story about this. And I think it's very important to share my story today because of what has been happening in our beautiful country in the last month. Now, in 1994, oh, that was a long time ago. I was a young man, a young Ernie, and I was asked to be in a play called Releasing the Spirits. It was an interactive play to talk about the effects of residential school. Now, that's a heavy, heavy topic to talk about. And an even heavier topic to do in front of all the survivors and people that are affected by the residential schools. So the first performance was done in the Vancouver Friendship Center. And it was filled. We had so many people, so many elders. And there were so many tears. There were so many uh, feelings that were brought up because of this very powerful film. I left that night feeling heavy, but happy that I was actually able to share the truth about the residential school. 
Now our second performance was going to be performed at the Squamish Nation in North Vancouver. So we showed up early and not only that, it was going to be performed in front of the United Chiefs of BC. So all of the Chiefs were going to be there to watch us. So I was very nervous, very, very nervous. So as we were getting ready to go online and to go on stage, I was starting to feel that feeling, you know, butterflies in my stomach. But not only that, that heaviness on my shoulders about talking about that message of residential school, that message about trauma, that message about murder and torture. And all those horrible things that we had to endure and go through. I didn't know if I could do it. So I actually said a prayer out to the Creator. I said, please give me some strength, right? And then at that moment, I kicked the ground. And out of the ground spun this beautiful egg-shaped black stone. And I thought, whoa, that's very strange. So I reached down and I picked up the stone. And the minute I felt it in my hand, that cold stone, I could immediately feel heat radiate into my hands, all the way up my arms and into my heart and my mind. The rat right there I knew was a gift. So I took that stone, I put it in my hand and I could feel the power that, it, that I needed at that time. Now, happy to say, the performance went well, and we were able to get our message out to the very important people that needed to hear it. Now, at the end of that play, I thought about returning that stone back into Mother Earth, but I know that I needed strength to keep moving forward and talk about that message. So, I made a pouch. And in that pouch, I took that stone and I put it in. I then added, as you can see, a little bit of blue there. I added some other medicine, some tobacco, some diamond willow fungus, and I put it into my pouch in 1996. And here we are in 2021, and I still wear this whenever I need that extra little special, whenever I need to speak in front of people. I can just hold this and I can feel the power. So, you will meet a lot of people that will have medicine pouches. Some people may put it and hide it away, may, maybe even put it in their pocket. Other people like myself will hold it out and wear it very proudly. And as you can see, it's so old, it's even starting to turn a different color. But every time I look at this beautiful bag, it makes me smile. It makes me think of the residential school survivors. And now especially, it makes me think about the power of that message that is being said today. So that we know that every child matters and we will never forget. And whenever we need that little bit of extra courage to talk about that message, I have it right here. So, we are going to make our own package. Hello and welcome back. My name is Ernie Cardinal. I'm from the Cree Nation. I'm in Nihiel from the Sucker Creek Reserve. And I'm so happy to be able to do this craft with you on the, K the Kakite Unceded Territory. So, you will see that you will get a nice little package, and in the package will be the directions. And these directions, in case you need a little step-by-step -step reminder, will always be with you. And on the directions, if you flip it over, you will see that we included a nice little needle for the easy sewing that we are going to be. Now, I am going to remind everyone that this is a uh, uh, very beginner craft so even if you've never used a needle before this will be a good time to learn and it will not be difficult I promise you that so the directions we will put on the side because believe because I have been lucky enough to make this a few times now also you will also have some Lacing, nice deer hide lacing. The lacing is very strong, very uh, flexible, and the aroma to it is 
is a beautiful scent. Now this is going to be for going around your neck or uh, to be tied on the side of your belt loop. So we'll put that aside. And in it, you'll also see some artificial sinew. Artificial sinew is string that the indigenous people would use for many things, for fishing, for sewing their clothes like we are doing today, or for stitching up our homes and lodges. Now, the thing I like about sinew is you will get it, and it may look nice and tight like that, but maybe you want a little bit thinner, so you'll notice that it can easily be broken apart into multiple times, right? You can have really thin for very delicate stitching. Look how nice and thin, but it's still very, 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 very tough, right? So we'll put that aside. We'll put this one aside. And maybe we will use this one. So you may want to get your fingers a little bit wet. Tie this up nice and easy. Oh, look at this. It looks like this one wants to break apart too, but we'll leave it together. And put this string. Oh, let's see if I could do this. There it is. Look at that on my second try. Push that through, and you don't even need to tie it. Just leave a little bit of space like that. Is that good? Wonderful. Now, here are the two flaps of our medicine pouch. Now, I want you to put these down and feel the sides of it. Now, you'll feel one side is really smooth. And other side is kind of really soft and kind of fuzzy feeling. Now this is when I need you to decide which one you want. Do you want the, the, the nice uh, smooth side or the nice fluffy side, right? Now once you decide, you're gonna to have to put, I think I'm gonna go just like my old one. You can see that I use the soft side. So, if that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the bottom one with the, with the soft side facing out. Then I'm going to look over here. This is the soft side. This is the fluffy side. So I'm going to flip the soft side so it's touching each side. And try to do it so the holes are matching. Now, what did I tell you? Is that simple and very easy? And if you're having any problems, just hit that pause button and you could rewind or you can catch up if you fall a little bit behind. Now on here, you'll notice that there's little teeny holes all the, all the way around it, perforated all the way around. So you don't even have to worry about punching your holes through because that could be a little hard sometimes. So. What I always like to do is I like to give it a little bit of pull so you can see your holes. So let's give that a little pull on this, these sides too, right? And I'm sure as you're in your classroom or you're at home in your living room, you will notice that you don't have to pull too hard to see the holes come out. Oh, yes. I hope you can all see that on this wonderful video that we're posting on National Peoples and in, in, National Indigenous Peoples Day. Now, once we have that, we're going to take our needle and we're going to push it through both sides. Now when you get to the close to the end, I want you to tie a quick little knot. Now if you're not good at making knots, hopefully you could find a really qualified 
teacher or an Aboriginal sport worker to give you a hand, but like me, I think I was an ex expert knot maker when I was probably five years old. So I hope everyone out there can make a nice knot. And if you have a little bit of uh, string left over the side, don't worry about that. We'll just let that sit. Now here is the cool part of this medicine pouch. Now I'm going to change my stitching a couple times for you, but I'm hoping that you at home or the classroom are going to decide on one way of stitching and kind of stick to that. Now here's the one that I like to do because it's very easy. So you go to the next hole, you just push it through. Now you may want to push it through one and then aim it up to the next hole and push that through again. There we go. Now once it's there, you flip it over and go to the next hole and push it through. What I love about crafts is sometimes you could just, if you're with some friends, you could tell good stories, you could joke around, or if you're by yourself, it's a good time to think about all the good things in your life. Now, as you can see, this is starting to come along really, really easy and really, really fun. I hope that you're able to not miss any of the holes as you go through. Now, this is a nice, easy, And sorry if I keep saying easy and you may be having a little difficulties. That's because I've done this a bunch of times. So if you're having a little bit of trouble getting it through, don't worry. Just take a little bit of patience and push it through. Now, I want to show you this. You'll see that this is just going through and back, back and forth, right? That's a nice stitching. That's a nice, easy stitching, right? Now you can stick with that one and look what happened. My little thing fell out. So let me see if I have the luck again and I can push it through. My grandmother had a way, or as I call her, my cookum, she had a way of stitching where she never ever Okay, look at that, the sinew, it wants to go into two. But like I said before, I wanted a little bit bigger, stronger sinew, so that's why I'm going to leave it together. Ah, see? With a little bit of patience, I was able to get it back the way I wanted. Now, here's another way of stitching that I think you may find interesting. Now, this way, I'm going to push it through the hole. But, instead of going straight up and down, this one is going to go across. And then I go back over again. So I'm only feeding it through one way. There it is. Now I'm sure some of you, especially the ones that may be in the upper grades, and maybe are in art class and have found different ways to be creative, maybe you're going to find a different stitch, maybe a cross stitch, maybe a uh, uh, interesting st stitch that even an old guy like me has never done. But here is the two different stitches. So, the first one 
it's just going in and out, in and out, in and out, back and forth. So you're going to have to flip it back and forth. And I kind of like it because it's a very tight stitching. Some people like to do this stitch that is going over, around, and around, and around. Kind of like a coil binding on your notepads. Now the nice thing is, when you look at it this way, you could see the differences. Now the one that is like a coil, you can kind of see the sinew stick out a little bit more, and the ones that go in inside back and forth kind of likes to hide. So I want you to kind of look at these two different stitchings. And once you find the one that you like the best, I want you to stick with just that one. So, which one am I going to use? Well, because I already kind of switched over to the coil, I think I'm going to stick with that. But I hope that you, out there in the video land, can actually post or send me a note and tell me which way you went. I also hope that out there, you can actually send some of your pictures of your medicine pouch. Now this should take about 20 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer. Maybe there's some people out there that are expert sewers and it could be done in two minutes. It's not a race, but it's a journey and I hope you get to enjoy this time. It's a good time to talk and meet with your friends, talk about the different stitchings, and hopefully you'll talk about what you want to put into your medicine pouch. Now I was lucky that I was able to find a beautiful rock that has a lot of meaning for me. But maybe for you, it could be something very special. Maybe a coin that maybe somebody special has given you. Maybe it's going to be a, a flower that maybe somebody has gifted you long time ago, right? Maybe it could be a picture of somebody that you really, really love and miss. But that item can be either a secret item and only you know what goes into this medicine pouch. Or like me, it could be something that I like to share. So not only is it a teaching moment, but it's also a, something to remember all the experiences that I had as a young man. Hi, welcome back. So as you can see, we left off right around here and through the art of editing and making it, we were able to go all the way over here and now we're nearing the end. So as you can see from this, except for my demonstrating of a different stitch, hopefully you've chosen your own particular stitch and kept it all the way around to the very end. So. At the beginning, we tied a knot right here. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So just to these last two here, there's one. And I hope that while you were making this, you had a lot of good conversations, or maybe you thought about what you're going to put into your pouch. Now, as I tell a lot of people, whenever we make drums, sometimes that image or that thought may not pop in your mind immediately. But don't worry. Just because you have a pouch doesn't mean you have to immediately feel it. A time will come when you know exactly what needs to go in here and you will know at the bottom of your heart and in your total person of what special item you need to put in here. So until that time comes, I hope you have a happy time finding and discovering new medicines. So as you can see, I'm at the final one. Now I leave a little bit so I can just push this through the loop and make an easy knot. There we go. Right? There's no need to do uh, any other big knots, but if you want, you can just push it through again. 
Sometimes it's nice to have a double knot. Some people even like to go and do two or three. But this, as you can see, the sinew is so good that this will never come undone. So we'll put this away. And we'll grab a little bit of uh, this and we'll just snip it off. You can even clean up your other side a little bit. So there we go. Look at that beautiful job. Now here's the part where you've got to flip it over and see the amazing work that you've done on your medicine pouch. Push it out, and if you're lucky with this stitch, you're actually going to see the stitching. Give it a nice rustic and traditional kind of look. Doesn't that look amazing? Look at that. A wonderful job. And then for the other people that use the other stitching, you're going to see that's a little bit closer so you won't see the sinew as well. Both are beautiful and unique just like all of you people out there. So here's this beautiful pouch. Then you're gonna take your lacing and this part is extremely difficult. No, I'm joking. This is a very easy, easy process. So you don't even need a needle. All you do is just push it through one and out. So you're gonna start weaving in from one side Push it through the other. Oh. Sometimes it needs a little bit of coaxing, but it will always come through, right? Look at that one. That one went nice and easy. So in and out. I bet there's some people that are probably already finished. And you just want to go through every hole on the outside and then back through the inside. Easy peasy. I always wondered where that saying came from. Now, if you enjoy these type of crafts and you would like to learn more, please follow the link to Spirit of the Children's Society and we have opportunities for more indigenous crafts, different teachings. And boys and girls, it costs absolutely nothing. All we ask is that you keep an open mind and want to learn the indigenous way. And there we go. Oh, if you find that it gets a little bit tangled, that's no problem because it's nice and easy to untangle. There we go. Open that up. And there we have now a place where we can put different medicines in. Now on this side, you just have to find an easy little knot to tie. And I'm sure a lot of you are gonna find some really interesting knots. I've seen people where they actually tie it here and here so that they can push push it uh, in and make it small and big. But for this demonstration, I'm just doing a basic knot. I'm not even going to trim it. I'm going to leave it like that, right? And then you can tighten it up. So let's go into our bag of medicine. Let's open it up. The Spirited Children's Society opening it up. And how about we put some diamond willow fungus? Diamond willow fungus is a very special medicine. We call it grandmother medicine. Grandmother medicine is very important because it's a beginning of our journey on a sacred way. And it's for great healing. So we'll put that one in there. Now let's look and see here. 
All right, Kinnikinnik is traditional tobacco before we use tobacco. This is for good dreams. Hmm, that should be a good one. Oh, now this is for uh, balancing your body and mind. Black kosha root. Oh, this is for if you got headaches or you want a clarity. That's a good one too. And this is for, um, once again, your physical health. Oh my, ceremonial tobacco. Now this one, isn't the recreational tobacco filled with all those nasty carcinogenic things that will actually kill you? This is actually traditional tobacco that's used for ceremony and as offerings. So this one is a very important one because I always like that because it's always just like black diamond willow fungus, one of the very first. Now it's always up to you to put what special special items. So how about we put those two in there? Can we give this a nice tight pull? And look at that beautiful, beautiful medicine pouch, right? Now that is one of the first steps towards having a good indigenous perspective, a balance, harmony, peace, and well, let's just face it, doesn't this look cool? All right. Thank you very much, all my relations.